I don't know who he is, but he's burned and he wears a weird hat and a red and green sweater, really dirty, and he uses these knives like giant fingernails. In today's video, thanks to the folks over at Factory Entertainment, we're going to be having a look at A Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger Premium Motion Statue. To figure out how tall Freddy Krueger stands, we're going to put the tape measure in right next to it and putting it to the top of his head. There we go. Right there. Right there. That sounds good. To the top of his fedora, one Freddy Krueger stands at 10.9 inches. You want to translate it to centimeters. That's okay. We can do that. 27.7 centimeters is how tall this motion statue stands. When you get the statue out of box, you're treated to seven pieces, two pairs of arms, two pairs of heads, or two heads, and then of course you get your main statue. The statue stands atop of a Nightmare on Elm Street circular display base, and we flip it upside down and we're treated immediately to Factory Entertainment 2017 and a speaker which will have something to do with the sound effects that come associated with the statue. Not only are you getting a really neat looking statue, but they've also included nine digitally remastered sound effects and pieces of dialogue directly from the motion picture, which is pretty cool. There is a button right on the side there that will trigger all of that, but why don't we wait until we get Freddy Krueger together? Luckily, one thing that's good about putting him together is all the component pieces are magnetized. You don't have to worry about forcing them in, as certainly you want to be able to interchange the different options that are available with him. So he does come with his defaulted hands. Now, this is Nightmare on Elm Street, first Nightmare on Elm Street Freddy Krueger. So one thing you'll see omitted from the sleeve portion is the stripes, the very familiar stripes that would make up his sweater in later films. Of course, one of the hands has to have the iconic Freddy Krueger glove, and it looks quite good here, right down to some individual scratches and wear and tear that they've incorporated into the statue's hand. To attach either one of these, or both of them, if you would like to have Freddy with both arms, simply just attach it like that. Like I said, it's all magnetized, so it involves little to no effort to put those in place. It's really only then up to you, as your creativity goes, how you would like to display the statue. We'll get a little bit more into that in a second. Then also included with Freddy Krueger, he comes with one regular head sculpt, and then one rather decayed skeletal head sculpt, but we'll look at this one first and foremost. It's a really nice representation of Freddy Krueger right down to the gashes and the burn away, melted away portions of his skin. It's a little bit more simplified here as it certainly was in the movie as well. They've done a nice job of giving not one, but two different, possibly even three different paints added to the flesh tone just to give it a little bit of depth and even the exposed 
uh, wounded areas of his of his flesh also has been treated some nice paint looks like there's a, a brown in there mixed with a little bit of like a rusted red teeth are slightly discolored eyes are very bright white looks as if he's almost kind of peering down which is kind of neat the fedora is slightly a variation than what we normally would see but then again the nightmare on elm street freddy the very first Freddy had a slightly more different shaped fedora than what he would get in later films. A nice job of kind of adding some additional pink here too as well. Primarily you're getting a dark almost grayish brown but just peeking on the ends here you get this nice kind of caramel brown. It really looks quite good. If this isn't your preference, don't worry, don't worry. The folks over at Factory Entertainment give you this gruesome sight as well. This is the pulled away face of Freddy Krueger, revealing a very skeletal interior uh, of his face, his more classic face sculpt. This again gives you plenty of different options, and being the fact that both of them are magnetized, it means simply popping one out and replacing it are the only steps required to go from this head sculpt to this head sculpt right here. Normally, I am a purist myself. I would more likely gravitate a little bit more towards this head sculpt, but I do really feel entertained to the idea of possibly swapping to this head sculpt. It, they've done a really nice job of adding this gold color to an otherwise very uh, pale skeletal face here. The skull is very nicely presented, even right down to the bloodshot eyes. A nice recessed, creviced area right sunken deep in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. They've even looked like they've sculpted in Freddy's tongue. Again, really, really cool. And to attach either one of these heads, it's simply just a case of attaching it to the top like that. And if you want to change it out, just pop it back out and put it in place like this. Now, I'm doing it this deliberately this way to show you. The one downside though to the statue is there's only one way that you can display the arms. We'll talk about these arms in a second. In the meantime, we'll, you know what, we'll take this head sculpt off and we'll replace it with the more conventional Freddy head. And we'll just move these arms out of the way for the time being. Let's have a look, a closer look at Freddy's body. As I said, this is Nightmare on Elm Street 1 Freddy, so omitted here will be the additional striping on his sleeves. He's got the, the typical Robert Englund sort of hunch or lunging over to the one side kind of the gunslinger leg pose that he's so frequently mentioned in in uh, interviews and whatnot like i said my only one concern or one thing i wish they could have incorporated let me just take the arm off for a second you'll see that there is a very distinct shape um, if they had made it more say like an octagon or you know even something along those lines something shaped in a way that you could have actually rotated the arm. Say if you wanted to rotate the arm this way, you could have. It's unfortunate though, but I understand why they would have done this because the way that the arms are sculpted, even at the very least, if you would be able to rotate Freddy's arm forward, it would certainly break up the sculpt that they had in mind for the shoulder draping itself then off into the sleeves. Um, I do like the head sculpt and the uh, they've added some additional wear to the sweater. Closely looking at the sweater, you can even see that they've put in like the indication that this was a knit sweater. Very nice, nice touch there. The striping is subtle. It's not very vibrant, but I guess it's accurate to the way it looks like in the movie. And like I said, he's got his trademark Freddy stance, standing a perched, standing atop of his circular base here. Now to do one better and to add some additional options for swapping out, they have also included the elongated arms that Freddy would have in the classic alleyway scene. And the same way, the same rules apply. You've got the magnetized peg here that simply is just going to attach the, the socket of the arm. It only goes in one way. Same thing also for this arm right here. Now, you would think that this would add some additional weight to the statue, and it does, but Freddy is firmly planted to his base, so it's not going to certainly go anywhere. And this is also a moving statue, a motion statue, if you will. So even though it does have a little bit of a teetering option to it, the statue I don't feel is going to fall over or anything like that. Because like I said, it's firmly planted to the display base to compensate for the fact that he's got the elongated arms. 
Speaking of elongated arms, this is actually a good opportunity to also discuss the additional paint. I'm going to go ahead and take this one arm off that they've added to the sleeve portion. Similar to the torso area of the sweater, you can see a very faint outlining there of the woven, the woven wool, I suppose, that made up his sweater. Nice airbrushing that has been incorporated in there as well, giving a natural light that would be hitting the certain folds and certain flaps and certain areas of the way that the sweater bends itself. It does have like a natural lighting hitting it, which I do like. Even like down to the sleeve, they've put the cuff or the bottom portion of the sleeve they've airbrushed and add some darker shading to there as well. As I had said at the beginning of this review, not only is this a statue that has motion to it, and the motion comes with aid of a, a spring that is attaching the lower torso to the interior socket area of the torso. And just that one little spring uh, does allow for a little bit of motion on Freddy Krueger. It's just enough that you can get him to sway, you know, sway back and forth. It's not to the extreme of a bobblehead. Um, this is not something that he's going to be swinging back and forth, and nor really should you because of the material that they used for it. But it does give you just a little bit of motion when you are moving the statue. You could even just kind of tilt it by tapping the side of his arm here. But like I had also indicated as well, this has audio, which is really cool. The audio that they've used, they've taken nine digitally mastered actual sound effects and the dialogue taken right from the motion picture. And to get through all of those, you're just gonna find that little button on the side. And the sound, of course, is gonna be projecting out from the bottom of the speaker. You're gonna go ahead and press the button here. Let's just actually put him down to accomplish this. We'll go ahead and press the button again. And the button is, sometimes the heart button is a little bit harder to find. It's just on the side here. It's parallel actually to his boots. We'll press that again. One thing you'll probably notice, and I'll cycle through a couple more before I say this. One thing I would say though, is that the sound is very loud. And that's actually a good thing because the way that the bass is, of course, you've got the speaker sitting on the underside of the bass, putting it any on any surface is gonna slightly muffle or slightly distort the sound. One thing being that they've used digitally mastered sound effects and audio is that you're getting a very clear audio coming from the bass, which is something that you don't get a lot from sound effect items. Often at times it may sound tingy or it might sound hollow. Here instead you're actually getting a rather clear, crisp presentation in the audio. I'll press the button again here. Those wishing to make their dreams a reality and pick up the Nightmare on Elm Street motion Freddy Krueger statue for themselves, good news. You can swing on over to Factory Entertainment's website right now and pick this one up. It's currently in stock and the price point is $124.99 or $125. For $125, you get yourself Freddy Krueger in his iconic look, in his iconic pose. As you can see, the weight of the glove is thrown off his posture in that made famous stance that only Freddy Krueger could do. If this look doesn't suit your fancy, however, Factory Entertainment also gives you the swappable uh, arms in which you can have the elongated arms made famous in the alleyway scene and one better if you want to swap out the head they also include the skull face there's really a lot of mixing and matching uh, available for this particular statue if you don't like the specific look and the icing on the cake is certainly having the additional audio with nine digitally enhanced tracks taken right from the motion picture like i said if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself currently it is in stock over at factory entertainment's website and i'll put the link down below today we were having a look at the factory entertainment nightmare on elm street freddy krueger motion statue with 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 sound and i think that's pretty cool that it comes with sound as well 
Uh, to check out more from Factor Entertainment, make sure you swing on over to their website, whether it is to pick up the Freddy Krueger for yourself or just to check out the other cool props that they got over there taken from films and television. Factory Entertainment's got some pretty cool looking stuff. If you want to swing on by to this channel on a more frequent basis and keep an eye on all the stuff that's coming to new to this channel in the way of reviews, the best way to do that is hit that little subscribe button that's just down below. Also, while you're at it and you finished this video, why not head on over to the homepage and check out the other videos that I've posted up to this point. All the videos leading up to this stature review of Freddy Krueger and beyond will be found in the video section best way to find out if you've missed anything along the way. We're going to have some more videos coming your way. I say we, it's it's me. Me, me, me. I'm going to have more videos coming your way, so certainly stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.